This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools. Quality tools, essential support. Be sure to use discount code SURVIVAL at checkout for 8% off your total order. All right, so we've got us a true prep table here that keeps draining water all over the floor. So first thing we did is came down here to the back. You can see we've got water here. We grabbed the drain line, blew on it, couldn't blow through the drain line. So we thought, okay, well, these have a known case of leaking refrigerant. And what that can result in, as we get over here, took it apart. And sure enough, you get in here and you get looking at the bottom of the coil and it is frozen. That's ice. That's ice all down through there. What ends up happening is either the thermostat is not cycling on and off correctly. There's a good shot of it. So either the thermostat is not defrosting properly because this has a constant kick in of usually 39 degrees area, give or take one or two degrees. And it's causing it to freeze up or it's low on charge and it never hits temperature. So it just keeps running, 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 never shuts off. So it never gets an off cycle defrost. I felt the condenser. It's really clean and it felt warm. So there's a good chance it's probably okay on refrigerant, but it may not be. Now the first thing I had to do is sweep all the water out because we had quite a bit of water in there. But our condenser is really clean. I think I did a video on this once before because that or maybe it was that one over there. But the coil is really clean. I keep an air filter in front of it. It usually gets packed full of dust uh, from pizza, flour, uh, wing mix, stuff like that. I don't remember if this has a um, refrigerant tap on it. I couldn't see one. So we're gonna see if we can get in there and maybe see if the suction pressure is up to a normal level. It says 12 ounces, that's my marker. So it's probably been low before. That's always nice. Yeah, it's got valves built into it. Yep, I about bet you it's low again. Let's see if we can find a leak if it is low. Pretty sure it's not off by much. Let's take a peek poo, find out what we got. Yeah, I'm not big into sniffing the uh, ports where the refrigerant comes out, Schrader ports, just because. But I mean, look at this. We're we're picking it up four inches away. Give it a second to reset. This is the one thing I really like about it, but even the $450 version still has some really good detection. It has the same detection. So you see this peak up there. It helps me narrow it down. Obviously, it's leaking through that cap, something fierce. I mean, dumb amounts. Enough to take it out. So even though it has a rubber cap in there, even though it has the rubber cap, I mean, you can't trust it. You'd be better off with a brass cap. But even if we get a brass cap in there, the question is, is it gonna leak around the stem? obviously it's leaking through the stem now I have an exhaust hood right here and I have a kitchen fan right there so I've got a lot of wind here let's go ahead Check the suction line here, make sure it's not leaking. Back in this corner, that's a flare fitting. Good old flares that are generally not made correctly. Let's see if that gives us anything. Be 
great if it's just that and not an evaporator, but usually it seems to always be the evaporator. All those vinegars and stuff like that just have a tendency to cause leaks in the coil. Well, looking good there. Not so bad there. I'm all about testing it with the caps on. So, under super, it barely picks it up at the cap. Scan all through this thing. We'll go ahead and check around a few other spots and then we'll check the evaporator. Okay, I got a hit back here in the back. Normally you'd have a leak on the capillary tube there, but I believe I got a hit somewhere. I wasn't watching when I did it. That suction line is all ate up. That's right there. And it's on there too. Yeah, in those two spots there, for sure. Got it sprayed. We need to see if anything shows up here. Kinda hard to see anything just yet. Oh, that's hot. So we got the vacuum cleaner ready to go. We're getting water all over, but we're just gonna suck it back up. We're already getting a good portion of it melted out of there. We got our pump sprayer here, got it pumped up. It's just easy enough to get in there and just melt that out. And once you got that out, we'll go ahead and charge it back up. I'll probably just pull the charge, weigh it in, be done with it. I mean, you probably could add a couple ounces to it, but we'll see. We'll see how bad it is. It's uh, probably gonna be about four or five ounces out of 12 low, is what I'm guessing. But and since it's leaking, I don't know if I'm really concerned about it being absolutely perfect. And I don't know what the availability is on the coils. I don't know if those are like everything else right now that you can't get. I'm just gonna have to do what we gotta do to make this thing run as long as possible until we can get some parts. Yeah, see it melts that, it melts that pretty quickly. Finally draining. Took a while, but that's what's going on. I thought I'd replace that thermostat. Looks like it was August of last year. So that's been replaced once. What I ended up doing is vacuuming out the pan so that you got that cold water out of there. Then I ran the hot water in behind it and that, that finally got the last bit of it out of there. It was just shooting the hot water down down through the bottom of the pan there. But go ahead and uh, finish vacuuming out the rest of this and get her back together and get her juiced up. It's low on charge, so it never got down to that temperature, so it didn't thaw out properly. Froze up, caused the water leak. It was cold enough that it kept the product cold, but unfortunately it uh, would not drain because the coils froze up. So what we ended up doing, we found the leak, we recharged it back to spec. We've got 12 pound suction, 145 head. We're 72 degrees in here. We're at 109 there, so we're basically running, uh, let's go 83, 93, 103. So we're 36 degrees over ambient. We're running a 10 degree evaporator. Our issue here, uh, we probably got capillary tubes starting to get plugged up a little bit. That's resulting in a lower suction temperature. Box is pretty much at about temperature. So design temp, we should be running somewhere around the 15 degree evaporator area, give or take. 18 uh, so that's what we got going on so we got everything cleaned up everything's running we're getting down to temperature pretty good i think we're already if that's even accurate right at 40 there 32 ish there we turned the stat back up to about a number six five's default so that should wrap that one up well guys if you enjoyed the video and you want some more like it make sure you give it a thumbs up subscribe check us out on instagram and facebook and until next time we'll catch you on the next one Later.